the water, Barakatha, Kahalayumla, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakwadash, double honors to the apostles that others a great millstone, Shalawam salutations to the hopeful elect that's fighting a good fight of faith and truth and sincerity and wholeheartedly, Shalawam unto the Akwath, which is the women believers, Shalawam unto you. This scripture right here says a mouthful, and this is actually the fight against good and evil against an unbeliever and a believer. This scripture right here says a mouthful. Most people don't understand this, but it says, whoso take a pleasure in wickedness shall be condemned, but he that resists the pleasures crown of his life. So this is the straight gate against the broad. The straight gate is difficult. That's what straight mean, a burden, position of difficulty. The S-T-R-A-I-T, that word straight. So I always say this to make a quick example. We have desires to. Until we be changed, as it say in 1 Corinthians 52, well, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 52 on down, it talks about us being changed in a twinkle of an eye. It talks about us putting off, you know, corruption and putting on incorruption, putting off this mortal and putting on immortality. So until then, we are corrupted. The only difference is that the Lord had grace and mercy upon us. That's the only difference. You think we don't have desires? And if you say that you don't, you're calling the Lord a liar. Jeremiah 17 and 9, it says that your heart is. Is desperately wicked and deceitful. Who can know it? So we have wicked thoughts. The difference is the Lord had grace and mercy upon the ones he called. And it's all about being, you ain't going to be the elect until you endure to the end. We ain't not, we're not at the end yet. So it's been a lot of us who've been called. But the point is, is that in the world, people that's in the world, they have many devices, you know, Going to the club, smoking weed, getting drunk, you know, doing whatever they want, playing video games all day. The liberties that they have. But that's why it says they're going to be condemned. They don't consider Second Corinthians five and ten for we must all appear before the judgment seat. So the reason that Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. You know, in Ezekiel 3 and 17, it said, warn my people from me. When you warn somebody, you warn them from something, danger. So when you try to tell people about the truth in the in the rules and regulations that you have to live by, oh, that's a burden. That's a burden to people. Why? Because you have to change. You have to practice discipline. When you don't, be in the truth. When you say, I don't care about the truth, you don't have to be disciplined. You can do whatever you want, but you're not going to get a crown of life. That's fair. For the ones who are not rejoicing now, talk about the believers, the one who is hasting for a world dwelling with righteousness. And the people of this world is living in their kingdom, even though you go through hell just like us. But you have devices to escape from reality. When you ask a person who smoke and drink, they'll just say, I do it because it feels good, which is a true statement. But the number one statement is that you're trying to escape reality. Most people turn to drinking and smoking because of their life. Because the earth was given into the hands of the wicked. So you have. The earth was given into the hands of the wicked, so it's nothing but wicked vibrations and wicked things to do. And also, if you don't have understanding, you look at the wicked winning. All it's, it's, it's a psychological battle that you will have if you're not in the truth. Even us sometimes be like, damn, I'm trying my best. I'm walking in the in the way of the Lord to the best of my ability. And I'm going straight. I'm going through pure hell and people who don't even give a damn about the Lord is just living life. But the scripture said that would be the case. But see, he that resists of pleasure is crown of his life. So let's get. It 
It says, and knowing that the time that now it is high time to wake out of sleep for now is our salvation nearer than we believe. And this scripture is so relevant right now when we come in upon the, the few prophecies that have to come to pass. This ain't the time to be playing games. This is the time to be buckling down. And I always say this. I believe that the elect is, is sealed already, but I'm just a man speaking. But for the, those who are able to get this truth right now, when the few prophecies have to come to pass, you don't even got to wait that long. The men of the Lord are still on the highways and by on the highways and byways preaching. Videos are still going up every day, which means that the Lord is still extending his hand to you. That means that you still can repent. If I don't know what the date is today, but whatever date it is, if you repent today, and walk in, you know, walk in the way of the Lord to the best of your ability, you have a chance to be part of the elect. And you ain't even have to, um, well, actually, now that I think about it, if you do, whoo, 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 uh, yeah, that's a good point right there. If you do come into the truth right now, you actually is, it's still a blessing. It's still a blessing. Don't get me wrong, but it's actually going to be kind of hard because you're going to have to buckle down real quick and you about to come into the devil coming down with great wrath. Like your faith is going to be tested. So the things that the men of the Lord have in favor is that they've been going through the walk. They've been going through Satan trying them and uh, people forsaking them. And, you know, we all got to go through the temptation that's going to come upon the whole world. But the Lord said, what do you say? That if you keep the word of my patience, I keep you from the hour of temptation. Revelation three and 10. But the thing is, so. You, whoever may hear this video and you playing games, I it will behoove you to stop playing games and, you know, come into the sanctuary of the Lord. But thinking about that, though, you have to really go through some things. You might love your wife. Your life, your um, wife might leave you. If you got older children, your children probably not F with you because you just now in their eyes, you the Grinch. You just uh, uh you, you just stoic, which means serious all the time. You know, because life is serious and people think it's a game. But. Thinking about it, though, for you to even be called in this time is still a blessing. Remember, the elect is foretold to win already. So even I'm speaking as a man right now, I'm just saying if you come into the truth right now, you still have to go through hell and you probably ain't you. And you're not disciplined as others. But the Lord, he makes provisions for his elect. So for those who are able to receive the truth right now, you're still going to be good because evidently the Lord trusted you. You know, scriptures talks about how wisdom would try you by wicked ways first. And then after the, um, the wisdom is able to trust you with her laws, then she will come to you. First Corinthians, I mean, Sirach 4 and 17. So it says, the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. And that's the faith. You know, the faith. See, faith is an action where faith would direct your steps. Also fear. And, um, you know, a lot of people believe that this is a burden and, and, and look at it like it's no blessing coming after it. That's the problem with people. I realize the spirit that the Lord put on me. I make a lot of videos like this. If you don't like it, don't watch my videos because it's all about warning, prophesying, telling you what's about to come to pass and then trying to show you your mindset and how your mindset is wrong. That's the that's the spirit that the Lord put on me, you know. So I'll go into a lot of videos like this, but it's so relevant for the times because as we getting closer and people still think that, you know, we crazy. But the beautiful thing about this is that the Lord, everything that we go through is in the scripture. So you can't be offended. If you choose to be offended, go ahead. Be my guest. And guess what's going to happen? You're going to be destroyed. The Lord warned you. So um, people is going to die. I've been I've been quoting this a lot. Your your mama, your daddy, if they don't believe your children, if they don't believe your wife, she had the best chance of being saved. But what if she could be in adultery behind your back? She ain't going to make it. All right. Your favorite cousin, your best friend in the world. 
they ain't going to make it. This is not no game. Why? Because it is. Whoso take a pleasure in wickedness shall be condemned. See, there's a judgment time for everything. And just because your judgment ain't today don't mean it ain't going to come. So it says, let us walk honestly as in the day, not rioting, going back to the pleasures and wickedness, going to the club, drinking all the damn time, smoking all the damn time, always trying to turn up. That's where rioting is. And drunkenness, not chambering in wanton is, which, not, which means not having no self-discipline. Every time you see something, you want to do something. That's a woman mentality. They just want to have fun. Not in strife and envying. All right. Because you're looking at the wicked. And the scripture said, you know, um, don't worry about the sinner, but be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. For surely there is an end and your expectation shall not be cut off. We have an expectation. But put ye on the Lord, Yahweh HaMashiach, and make no provisions for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Whoso take a pleasure in wickedness shall be condemned. But he that resists of pleasure shall have a crown of life. That's what it's all about. So. What's that? 20. It said, and take heed to yourself, lest by any time your hearts be overcharged with servitude, which means to have excess over always overindulging in something. But surfeiting is talking about over um, overindulging in um, meats and in, in, in drink. All right. Matter of fact, let me get that real quick. It said, be not unsatiable, which means never satisfied in dainty things, nor too greedy upon meat. So that's junk food and meats for excess of meats bring of sickness and servitude will turn into cola. Cola is um, anger and irri irritability. That's why your ass is always um, agitated all the damn time because of your diet. And also it brings parasites, which is demons and Listen, we do the best that we can in Babylon the Great. We eat chemicals. Man, call Halal Yahweh Bashim Abishai for provisions for us, man. Because as I say in Haggai 1 and 6, it said that you eat, but you're not filled. You drink, you're not um, filled. You know, you're clothed, but you ain't warm. Basically, it's symbolic as you never have enough. We eat GMOs. So that's why you eat a lot. You eat more than what you're supposed to. But, you know, we do the best that we can. But we still got to read these scriptures. And the Lord is, hey. This is the instruction book of life. But the point is that that's why you that's why you got fat fuckers out there because they eat too damn much. Pray to the Lord. If you if you are this person who ever watches video, pray to the Lord to give you strength to fight your appetite. So, um, so I'm saying take heed to yourself, lest by any time your hearts be overcharged with serpentine and drunkenness and cares of this life. And so that that day come upon you unaware. See, when you are living in bliss, you're not watching. You're not watching. You're not praying. But then when all trouble, when your fun stop, now you want to get serious. But the Lord says it's going to be too late. He said he's going to mock when your fear cometh. For a snare shall have come upon all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. That's because you're not watching. You're not praying. You're rioting in the, in the nighttime. All right. We are in the night right now. The day represents the kingdom. So you're rioting, which is partying, bullshitting, turning up in the nighttime when you're supposed to be morning. You're supposed to be. The scriptures talks about how uh, godly sorrow work of repentance, but worldly sorrow work of death. And that's what you're doing, because guess what? You so worried about this world. You so worried about trying to be happy in this world, trying to turn up, trying to live the American dream, doing whatever it takes to get a dollar. All right. The scripture said he was going to bless us with our daily bread. And, and trust me, you're going to realize how uh, important that is. I was looking for another word. You're going to realize, oh, you're going to realize how appreciative you was, because guess what? The scripture said we're going to be as pilgrims on the earth. So daily bread and all that stuff, you're going to be on the run. So when you I hate me, this is the one thing that I hate the most. I know people who got a good job, who got a house over their head, a car. They pay their bills and they never go without food. 
and they complain every fucking day because they still want more. You're going to realize what you had was a blessing. And when you lose it, you're going to realize like, damn, I guess that my life wasn't that bad. You got people who live on the damn street with a sign begging for change, eating out of trash cans every night. All right. So it said, watch you therefore and pray always that you may be accounted. Let's read that first sentence again. Watch ye therefore and pray always. A man ought to always pray and faint not Luke 18 and one. The main reason why you need to pray is because our fight is not against flesh and blood. But principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places, man, we always attack the food, attack us, the drink, the things that we drink. Everything is poison in this place. Only reason that we alive is because of the Lord. Only reason that we able to have a sound mind is because of the Lord, because guess what? Vanity and vexation of the spirit every damn day. You got to see wickedness. You got to hear wickedness. And the people that you love don't even F with you like that. And you can't even talk to them like that. You separate yourself from them. So it's basically you against the world. So watch you therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things, which means that trouble is coming. The Lord, this is your speaking. If I was in the blue letter being read right now. All right. To be a, he said to be accounted worthy to escape all these things. What things? The trials and tribulations, the devil coming down with great wrath, famine. Death. All right. Like this is what's coming to the world. So if you want to continue to have pleasure in wickedness. And continue to do whatever your heart desire, well, you're going to not escape it. That shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. That's what we look forward to. We look in to look Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah in the eyes, in the chariot, and going back to get that crown of life. Revelation 2 and 10 said, if we endure, we will get a crown of life. Matter of fact, let me end it on that. Some of us going to be martyrs. Oh, damn well. We're going to get a crown first. It said, fear none of those things which you shall suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, which is captivity, that you may be tried. And ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give you a crown of life. And if you know what death is, which is rest. All right. Trust me, you would rather be in the spirit world than what's about to be um, coming upon the earth. And I'm talking about the second death. All right. If you die in the name of the Lord, you're going to be risen first to get a crown. It's a win-win situation. Call Halal Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Hopefully this video is edifying and shalom.